Welcome everyone to the University of Southern Queensland's virtual open evening. My name is Philippa Garmany and I'm the Associate Director of Future Students here at University of Southern Queensland. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the Gaibal and Jarawa peoples of the Toowoomba area, the Jagera, Yugara and Yugurupal peoples of Ipswich and Springfield, where USQ campuses and hubs have been built and whose cultures and customs continue to nurture this land. USQ also pays respect to elders past, present and future. Further, we acknowledge the cultural diversity of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and pay respect to elders past, present and future. We celebrate the continuous living cultures of the first Australians and acknowledge the important contributions Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have and continue to make in Australian society. During this live stream event, you will hear from several of our USQ staff about what study opportunities are available at USQ what student support services are available for our students, our pathway to study programs and scholarship options, as well as how you can apply for semester three 2019 or semester one 2020 study. USQ is the number one university in Australia for median graduate salary in 2019 and 2020, and the number one university in Queensland for student support, with campuses in Toowoomba, Springfield and Ipswich, as well as online study options and with over, and with over 27 and a half thousand students from around the world studying in over 700 specialised professional courses, USQ has the course and mode of study to suit you. During this live stream, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them on the Zoom live chat using the Q&A button down the bottom. We will try and answer any questions that are asked during the event. If we are unable to answer your question tonight, we will ensure we touch base with you in the next few days with an answer. A recording will also be sent out after this event to all those that registered. The first person I'd like to welcome to speak is Associate Professor Tony Arfok, who's Head of School for our Mechanical and Electrical Engineering School, and will be providing us with an overview of our Health, Engineering and Sciences programs here at USQ, including what is new and trending and what key courses are on offer. Thank you, uh, Philippa. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Philippa says, I'm Tony Afok, and currently I'm the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Health, Engineering and Sciences. I'm here to tell you about our practical uh, degrees with great starting salaries. You can enrol full-time uh, in our two-year, three-year or four-year programs, or you can study part-time or online. In the area of health and community, we offer programs and majors in human services, nursing, paramedicine, midwifery, sport and exercise, clinical exercise, physiology, psychology, counseling, biomedical sciences, medical laboratory science, uh, and human physiology. You have, you have access to first class labs and simulation, you work alongside industry professionals during your professional experience placement. Your degree is professionally accredited and you have multiple career opportunities. In the area of engineering and built environment, we offer programs uh, and majors in agricultural engineering, civil engineering, construction management, electrical and electronic engineering, instrumentation, control and automation engineering, mechanical engineering, mechatronics engineering, mining, urban regional planning uh, and surveying. Your degree is professionally accredited. You gain practical skills leading to multiple career opportunities you have access to first-class labs, you share your work, and you network with industry uh, professionals. USQ is number one in Australia for engineering graduates in full-time work. In sciences, we offer environment and sustainability, astronomical and space sciences, physical sciences, biology, animal science, food science, plant agricultural science, wine science, computing, information technology, mathematics, 
and statistics. You have access to first-class labs. You have multiple career opportunities and can contribute and shape the future. These are uh, slides that uh, give you uh, details uh, on the programs and courses that I have mentioned. There is a job growth in project and projected need in health, agriculture, construction, scientific services, electrical and mining engineering, and surveying. We have Head Start uh, programs for those who have finished uh, year 10. Courses available in Head Start in semester three are listed on this slide. You can commence your studies in semester three if you're doing undergraduate programs. And we have listed for you in, on this slide uh, the undergraduate majors and programs that are available. We also have available in semester three a number of postgraduate programs uh, that you can see currently on this slide. Finally, we also have a wide range of programs, both undergraduate and postgraduate, that commence in semester one. Uh, if you have uh, any questions about those, Please uh, do not hesitate. Uh, you can ask your questions now, or uh, you can uh, contact us later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Associate Professor Arfok, for that update. I'd now like to welcome Dr. René Demachelier to this lectern. Dr. Demachelier is Associate Dean Learning and Teaching for our Faculty of Business, Education, Law and Arts. Dr. Demachelier will be providing an update on business, education, law and arts programs, including what is new and trending and what key courses are on offer. Thanks, Philippa. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the real highlights for us um, in our faculty that are coming up in the next 12 months or so. We've got some uh, rethinking and revamping of some of our programs and some exciting uh, innovation in the postgraduate space. Uh, I'll go through each of our study areas. So first of all, creative arts. I'll just get my... Um, creative arts have a fantastic opportunity under the new Colombo plan, uh, which enables students to go and study in Japan and actually engage in their their particular art practice in, in Japan, in another country. Um, with the Bachelor of Creative Arts, the Music Contemporary Program is going to be delivered for the first time at our Springfield campus in 2020. The Master of Edi Editing and Publishing also commences in t um, semester one 2020. That's a new program for us and it's fully online. It's perfect for anyone who's already in the industry, um, as well as those people looking to upskill. Uh, from 2020, we also have the opportunity for our TV and radio students to have uh, internships with Channel 9 across Australia as part of the degree. So you can actually get real work-based experience as part of that program. In commerce, our very popular aviation program, which is currently situated at Springfield, is starting at our Toowoomba campus as well. So you'll be able to study aviation Toowoomba on campus from 2020. Uh, we also have some new majors coming in the Bachelor of Business and Commerce, which are things like wealth management, um, things that are a bit more contemporary and interesting. Um, management and enterprise, 
uh, there's been a lot of work going on with management and enterprise and commerce around the MBA space and we've actually done a complete rethink and revamp of our MBA program and which will be rolled out and it's all about problem-based learning and it's offered through a block model approach so it it's a really big change to that program which we think will be um, much uh, more in line with industry practice and uh, very valuable for anyone who's looking to work with an MBA in those spaces. In education, we've got new programs for grades 11 and 12 around things like food technology, psychology, religion, industrial technology and design, and you will be able to study in those areas in education from 2020. As part of the Future Teachers Program with the Department of Education, Year 11 and 12 students in Queensland State Schools who are thinking about coming up a teacher could be eligible for financial assistance and fast-tracking careers um, by studying part of your teaching degree while you're still at school. So that's an excellent opportunity as well. Our revamped Master of Education is also about to start for anyone who is already now, in a teaching space, in an education space, doesn't have to be in a school space necessarily. Um, and we've got seven specialisations in that, including guidance and counselling, special education, TESOL, career development, and for the first time we're offering STEM education, um, as well as educational leadership, or you can choose an own, your own general pathway in that space. Humanities and communications. Uh, this is a really exciting one as well. We're, for the first time, introducing a professional photography major uh, in the Bachelor of Communications. So that will help you work in a visual way uh, in the communications space as well as in a written way. Um, and you can study that um, very in, in a very innovative way. It's not actually uh, necessarily just um, DLSR. DSLR camera based, we'll be looking at things like how do you use this, this photography medium through things like your iPhone, the things you've got in your pockets. Uh, we've also got a new advertising major which has already kicked off and is getting really great reviews from the students. They're really um, appreciating the hands-on nature to the advertising degree and this is a, a recent picture that's only been taken in the last few days of some of our um, early degree students filming their own ad. Law and Justice, this is a really exciting one if you're a crime junkie podcast person like I am. Um, we're offering a criminology degree uh, and a criminology, sorry, associate degree, as well as a criminology um, major or extended minor as part of the Bachelor of Arts. So this means that students who want to study um, both law and criminology can do a double degree in law and arts. Uh, the MOOC competitions that are available to students through USQ Law Society um, are available first year, for first year students and for students later on in their courses. And we have an excellent uh, USQ Law Society, which Student Law Society, which won the best club on campus in 2018 and 2019, and is very active um, in within the school space, to, the um, talking to the school and the academics, as well as working with their peers. Uh, there's integrated work learning opportunities through the law program and clinical ex experience available in the family law clinic. Uh, and the final thing that I'd really like to touch on is we're offering uh, USQ Upskill. This is a new uh, suite of courses that are online, that are 40 hours that are actually then stackable towards credit in a program that you're eligible for. So what these courses do is actually offer people the opportunity to upskill in an area that they're already working in or to dip their toes into postgraduate study. If you're not quite sure where the postgraduate study is for you, this is an opportunity you can come and study a 40-hour course um, over six weeks in total and just see whether 
you enjoy that study area or not. So they're designed for professionals in the workplace and currently we have a suite of courses including um, marketing and communication, management and business and education. These are just a few of the courses that are on offer in that space and we're currently working on a whole suite of new courses as well that will be available in the new year. Um, happy to take any questions now if there's any online, no? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr Damascelli, for that update. Next, I would like to invite, invite Isabel Dow to the lectern, who is USQ's Senior Scholarships Officer, working in our Student Success and Wellbeing Department. Isabel will provide an update on the scholarships available at USQ, as well as student support and wellbeing services available to you once you become a student at USQ. Good evening. Um, so I do work in student success and wellbeing um, in the scholarships office. I'm going to talk about student success and wellbeing first. From your perspective, that's probably not a label that you're going to hear much, but we have three um, areas within student success and wellbeing that you will hear a lot about once you're a student at um, USQ. So the first part of uh, student success and wellbeing is the health and wellness team. So the health and wellness team, I mean, it the name says what they do. We have a fully accredited health service. Uh, so we have medical practice on all three of our campus, campuses. That includes GPs, nurse practitioners, registered nurse. Um, so for nursing students, that's really important because you can get your serology done. So you can find out um, what vaccinations you need in order to do your prax. Um, it's also handy because you can bring your dependents to the medical practice as well. Um, we also have counselling services through the same practice, again, at all three campuses and online. Um, so if you need to, you can do email counselling. We've got telephone counselling um, as well as Zoom. So you have lots of different options if you want to have personal counselling. If you're having a bit of a tough time at any time during the semester, that's what they're there for. Um, so it's an excellent service. Um, health and wellness also covers multi-faith. So we have a chaplain coordinator. So there are chaplaincy services to help students connect with their faith community on campus. Um, they also, so they offer spiritual guidance. They also register events. Um, and in Toowoomba, we've just recently um, constructed a new Islamic prayer room. So there's a lot happening in that space to enrich students' lives while they're studying at USQ. Uh, finally, there's also student welfare. So those are our wellness um, advisors who help students with the more practical things in life. So whether you're having trouble budgeting, um, if you're having problems with a landlord, if you've got questions about anything more practical, including student financial loans. So the university offers interest-free loans for students who are having trouble accessing textbooks. If you have um, an emergency and you need a bit of assistance with it, they can also offer interest-free loans in those kinds of emergency situations. So that's health and wellness. Um, next one I'm going to talk about is careers and employability. So that's really what we're all here for um, when we're coming to study is to, to, to look forward to um, a change in career, an improvement in our career, a brand new career. Um, so careers and employability offer career counselling. So that's one of their main business. Um, so they do one-on-one -on -one career consultations and that can be with prospective students too. So if there's anyone listening tonight who isn't 100% sure or committed to whatever program they want to do, but they know what their priorities are, they know what they're good at, you can see a careers counsellor to discuss what's actually the best option for you. It's also really handy if further down the track, you're studying marketing, you find it's not actually right for you, they can help you decide whether you want to change into something else and what's a smart way to do it. Um, they also work on employability skills, so they work with um, resume writing, they do um, employability skills workshops, so sometimes they might do mock interviews, um, they connect students with industry, so they're always out and about meeting prospective employers, getting feedback and connecting students with them through whether it's work experience or other um, projects. Am I going for time? Um, finally, I want to talk about the... The third, um, which is social justice, equity and inclusion. So social justice, equity and inclusion, it's a fairly broad name. So in that space is disability support services. And probably the most important thing I can say about disability support services at USQ or in any space in your life is that they can be temporary 
They can be permanent, they can be visible, they can be invisible. So at the university, we recognise that there are challenges that you may face that you need a bit of assistance with in order to access education on an equal footing to other people. So if you make an appointment to see a um, equity officer, they can help assess your needs and make suggestions about um, appropriate adjustments that will help you achieve in your studies. So they're a really great first stop if you have any concerns um, in relation to how you're going to handle study with a medical condition or anything similar. It's also important to know you can access them if you care for somebody who has a medical condition that might affect your studies. Um, in social justice, equity and inclusion, um, that's also my space in scholarships. So I'm the senior scholarships officer at the university. Um, that means that I, my office runs most of the undergraduate scholarships at the uni. Uh, right now, the most important thing for you to take away is that we currently have scholarships open for 2020. So I'd really love it if, if you're planning to start study in 2020 or even in semester three that you log in to the scholarships website after you've finished with this seminar and have a look at the scholarships because some of them close on the 3rd of November and that's this Sunday. So <laughs> we want to make sure that you can have a look. Um, if there's something that you want to apply for, the sooner you see it, the better, because if you have questions, you'll need to ask them before Friday. So they close on Sunday. My office isn't 24 seven as much as I don't know if I really want that, but I'd like to be able to answer your questions. Um, so, so do get to us if there's anything you need to know prior to that closing date. Um, we also have others that are closing on the 17th of November, so you have a little bit more time for those. Um, but it's the same applies. Try to get to us with your questions, have a look at the application and see what you need in order to get ready to apply for the scholarship. Scholarships make a really big difference. Obviously, um, it's usually financial support. But one of the things that I really like to encourage students is not to count yourself out. Um, if you look at the scholarships website right now and there's nothing there for you, have a look again the next time you get an email saying that there are scholarships available. Um, if you apply for a scholarship now and you don't get one, it doesn't mean you shouldn't apply again. It just means it wasn't the right scholarship for you. So I really encourage everybody to keep looking, keep applying. Um, if you're not successful one time, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be successful the second time. Um, so I've talked about the website. You can use the website to filter the different options. So it helps you narrow We've got a lot of scholarships available, it helps you narrow them. Two really important things, are when you first look at a scholarship on the website, you click into it, you'll see eligibility and selection criteria. Eligibility is how you know if you're eligible to apply for the scholarship, will you be assessed, will your application be considered. The next thing is selection criteria, and that's how you tell us that you're the best applicant for that scholarship. So it's really important that you put a little bit of effort in. If you're asked to write a personal statement, um, answering a question like, why do you want to study nursing? We want to know why you want to study nursing. What inspired you? Do you have any stories? Um, do you have goals in particular that nursing is going to help you achieve? So um, that's your opportunity to really set yourself apart. Um, the next exciting thing is that students who would have been listening to this presentation this time last year would have had to fill out paper application forms, staple them together and send them in, in the mail. But this year, we have an online application system. It makes the process so much easier. It's fast, um, it's intuitive. The system reads your answers and predicts what you need to attach. So it's much simpler, um, much more straightforward. And as soon as you submit, you get um, a notification confirming that we have your application. Uh, anything else? Uh, if you do apply for a scholarship. It can take some time for the assessment process. So we just ask that you're patient. We do our best to keep in touch with everybody. If you're then successful, payments happen into the semester. They happen after census date. So again, there is a little bit of time involved, but we do our best to make sure that everything happens as quickly as possible. Um, I want to reiterate, don't count yourself out. Have a look at all of the scholarships. If there's more than one scholarship you're eligible for, apply for more than one scholarship. You can receive more than one. If there's ever a problem, we'll, we'll give you the better value. So that's how it works. Um, and again, I'm gonna reiterate the dates. 3rd of November, this Sunday, we have scholarships closing. So I'd really encourage you to have a look as soon as you can on the website to see if there's anything that you want to apply for. 
there's another date which is the 17th of November, so on that one you have a little bit more time. So visit the website, don't count yourself out, and always let us know if you have any questions because we're always happy to help. Any questions on scholarships? Not specifically about scholarships, but student support. Mm. Um, if a student is studying online, uh, how are they able to access the services that USQ have in student support? So most of our services are available. Um, so things like the career counsellors and the personal counsellors, you can make an appointment through Access, which is um, an online uh, sort of like a portal that you can access using your USQ um, login information to request a booking for an appointment. If you're in doubt about what you need, you can also contact our reception or send an email or contact Ask USQ and your inquiry will be filtered through to the correct place. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, I'd like to please welcome to the lectern Ms Rachel Hennessy. Rachel is the Student Enrichment Officer um, student leadership and our student life team and she will provide information about the student experience at USQ. Thank you. So as Philippa said my name is Rachel and I am a student enrichment officer for student leadership um, at the student life office. So welcome again everyone to the first virtual um, open evening. So I'd like to just start by saying that the Student Life team is very passionate about positive student experiences, whether you're online or on campus. Um, and we're really, uh, we really like to try and improve the entire student journey. Um, and as part of this, the Student Life team provides an all-encompassing program of enriching extracurricular and co-curricular programs, which again, you can study online, you can uh, participate, sorry, whether you're studying online or on campus. So I'll go into a bit more detail about those now. So, <clears throat> one of the main areas we have, oh sorry, we have four main areas within student life and um, the first area is student leadership and development, the second is clubs and societies, next is sport and then events. So one of the best opportunities for students to enhance their leadership skills here at USQ is to become an academic student representative, also known as an ASR. Uh, the next is a student representative on the SRC. Um, and next is just becoming a member or a student partner within some of our projects running at USQ. So these positions, again, are open to students whether you're studying online or on campus, and we have a really great online portal for you to communicate with students um, and also staff as well. So the SRC is a group of elected students who aim to improve the student life on campus, but also online. So at Student Life, we believe that while your studies are incredibly important, you also need to have a balance of extracurricular activities and you need to make time to connect with your fellow students and enjoy your time at university outside of your classroom. That's where joining the SRC or even participating in their weekly activities can provide you with opportunities to have fun, make friends and improve your personal skills. The SRC work closely with the Student Life Office to help run events such as orientation, social hour or previously known as common hours, um, and stress less week uh, events as well throughout the year. So on the other side of that, we have academic student representatives who represent the student voice on academic committees. So these committees are across the university and they can be for Bella, Hess or general um, social justice committees as well. Finally, all student representatives are able to attend the student forums where again, they represent the, their fellow students' voices by influencing how the student amenities fee will be spent. Other student rep leadership and development opportunities include a suite of leadership presentations, leadership and professional development workshops, annual leadership conferences, um, opportunities to join the USQ Phoenix Award and also opportunities to join the Golden Key International Honor Society. All leadership workshops and presentations are available 24-7 on the USQ website for you to access at any time. The USQ Phoenix Award is also available online 24-7 and is a great opportunity for you to engage in the full university experience. It is perfect for showing future employers exactly what you have learnt and achieved outside of the classroom while you're also developing your graduate skills and increasing your employability. The award encourages you to step outside of your comfort zone, meet new people, discover opportunities and build your skill set and expand your knowledge. 
An easy to use online system tracks the extracurricular and co-curricular activities that you complete while you study and applies points for each activity that you complete. When you reach 1,000 points and you finish your award, you'll receive a personalised certificate demonstrating the wide range of skills you've developed during your time at USQ and why you've participated in those activities. Um, and also a um, transcript of all the activities that you've completed. So moving on from the Phoenix Award, um, another great opportunity to connect with your fellow students and make friends online and on campus is to be involved with an affiliated USQ club and other student community initiatives. We have over 50 USQ clubs at the moment and these are across four different categories. So we have academic clubs, we have sporting clubs, we have cultural clubs and special interest clubs. So these are available again for you to join online or on campus um, and they do not discriminate either. So even if you're not studying engineering but you want to become a part of the engineering club just to learn a little bit more, you're more than welcome to apply. Um, one of my favourite clubs is actually the USQ Tea Society and while it sounds like you can't really do that online, you can. We Zoom students in and everyone sits down and has a cup of tea and has um, a biscuit. It's a really great way for you to connect with fellow students and also have a break from your studies as well and connect with the community. Um, so whatever your interest is, there is a club there for you and even if there isn't, we're happy to help you start one up as well so you can start up your own club. I'm personally waiting for a Chocolate Lovers Society to start up. That hasn't happened yet. Maybe 2020 will be the year for it. So if anyone would like to start a club and it's involving chocolate, please let me know. <laughs> So our next opportunity, our next sorry, pillar of our student life office is our sporting opportunities. So again, this provides you with a variety of social and competitive sporting activities, allowing you to maintain a healthy and active lifestyle while you're studying and a really good study break as well. So participation in these activities um, improves your physical and mental well-being, encourages your sense of belonging and to get involved with the community a little bit more and provides you with growth opportunities in life skills such as teamwork, leadership, communication, motivation and resilience. Sporting opportunities provided by USQ Sport include access to the national university competitions where a group of USQ students go to normally the Gold Coast and compete against all the other universities in Australia in your chosen sport. Um, they also have um, social sporting opportunities, um, professional development through short courses and non-academic support for USQ elite athletes. So if you are an athlete and you're competing at a regional or national level, level we also offer USQ elite athlete scholarships and sponsorship and non-academic support for you to help you through your studies while you're also competing at a, at a regional level. So one of the biggest events each year are the Unisport Nationals events. This provides you with the chance to build your team, uh, build a USQ team, whether you want to join and become a manager or you want to be the coach for the team or just participate. Again, this is a really good opportunity for you to meet new students. And this is a perfect opportunity for someone who doesn't study in the area of Toowoomba, Springfield or Ipswich to come along and join everyone at the Gold Coast and sometimes Perth. So Perth is next year in 2020. So if you live over that side, that's how you can get involved and meet some students in person. So that's another great opportunity. Social sports are another great opportunity to participate in physical activities and these are run from Monday to Friday from 12 until 2 at each campus and that includes basketball, volleyball and badminton. So these are offered at all of our campuses but then we do also have clubs that like to get involved at different levels and different um, locations around Australia to provide students with an opportunity to go and join a club as well. And whether or not you're a beginner, like I am with most sports, or an expert, these opportunities are a perfect way for you, again, have a break um, and meet some new people. So the final area I want to talk to you about tonight is the events and campus life at USQ. So at the start of your journey, you will see the Student Life Office running orientation events and activities both online and across all of our campuses. This includes our Student Life Expos, our annual SRC Welcome Party events, movie nights and games nights, just to list a few of them. But all of that information is on our events and activities calendar on the website for you to have a look at. Um, so orientation introduces you to the facilities, services and resources available to you as students and it's your main opportunity for you to be introduced to the university and be equipped with the tools you need to start your journey. So again, this is online as well and you can do the full experience online. 
In addition, each year Student Life develops a cohesive, inclusive and purposeful events and activities program. These events and activities build engagement with USQ, increase your sense of belonging again with making new friends, joining, being, becoming sorry, a part of the community um, and being able to really connect with your peers and your fellow students. So Student Life deliver the university-wide USQ Student Awards, weekly on-campus activities during our social hours, online speed, online speed networking and biannual student trips and pre-exam events. So Student Life also collaborates with other departments across USQ to, to deliver a range of additional events um, for USQ students, including Harmony Day, India's Independence Day and Are You OK Day. So there's never a dull moment and there's always an activity that you can get involved in or a group that you can join as well. So if you have any questions about any of the extracurricular or co-curricular activities that I've spoken to you about tonight, please reach out to us, contact us by phone, email, or drop in and talk to one of us at one of your campuses. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for that presentation. I would now like to introduce Associate Professor Marcus Harms to the lectern to talk about our alternate pathways to study at USQ, including our tertiary preparation program and accelerated entry pathway program. Associate Professor Harms is the Associate Director of Academic Development for USQ's Open Access College. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everyone. And it's a very great pleasure to be here and to be part of this event tonight. Um, I'd like to start by just introducing the Open Access College. It's a very important part of the University of Southern Queensland. Uh, one way or another, the university here has been offering our Pathways programs for about 30 years, and we are one of the largest in Australia. And I only mention those points for one reason, and that is to assure you that there is a, a great background of experience and determination and dedication in our delivery of the Pathways programs, which are delivered by those who have a very strong commitment to enabling the students to move forward into the degree and into the career that they would like. And so I think it's actually just nice to mention a couple of points about USQ more broadly. One is our uh, starting salary rate. Another is our uh, success or the, su the success of our students in obtaining full-time work. And I mention again both of those simply because for so many students, where that starts is in one of the enabling programs in the Open Access College. I'm going to talk about two of those now, the tertiary preparation program first and then our AEPP. So the tertiary preparation program, that's the one that we've been offering, as I say, for about 30 years, give or take a couple of years here at USQ. What does it offer? I think the first thing I'd like to say about it is that it is broadly for anyone. If you are an Australian citizen or permanent resident and you are over the age of 18, and you might perhaps find, looking at that list of my bullet points there, that you fit into one of those. Perhaps you didn't get the OP or the OP you were hoping for. Uh, maybe you didn't finish finally your secondary education all the way through to grade 12. Maybe you did, but it was some time ago and you've been away from formal study uh, and structured study for an extended period of time. Or maybe you're, you know what undergraduate degree you want to do but you don't have what we call the prerequisites, the, the necessary entry points, then TPP is for you. It never stops. The tertiary preparation program runs and almost all of our subjects run in semesters one, two and three. You can start in semesters one, two and three. You can study in Toowoomba, you can study in Ipswich, you can study in Springfield and you can study online. So it is a widely available widely accessible program if you're over 18. And the other point I'd like to make about it is that it is free. There are no textbooks to purchase. There are no costs associated with studying it. It is free for you uh, for, those, for the time that you need to do it. Now, just a little bit of detail for you of what it involves. Now, the slide there contains a great deal of information I know, and I just want to help demystify it a little bit for you. What is it that you actually do in the tertiary preparation program? Uh, those th that title gives you a little bit of a, an insight, I think. It's there to provide a range of skills that you may have and want to brush up on, or areas where you may want to develop further, or maybe a few things you don't know yet, but we feel that you probably do need to know 
to successfully navigate your way through study. So study management is essentially studying to be a student. What, what is it? What does it mean to actually be a university student? What are the, the smarts you need, the skills you need to work your way through a degree? Communicating at university means that there's not a, a right way or a wrong way to communicate. It just means that when you move into your degree, your lecturers are going to have some expectations about how you structure your thoughts and articulate them and reference them and document them. And so we provide an introduction to that as well. Uh, maths. Now, I freely admit maths is not my strong suit and it's not my favourite subject. I recognise its importance to a lot of degrees, though, and we teach a very great deal of mathematics in the tertiary preparation programme up to the level of what's called in school Math C, but starting lower than that as well. And we also try to give a taster of what it is you might actually want to study. Um, so if you're interested in a particular area, IT, science, psychology, humanities, uh, maths and yet more maths, we do have some discipline-based electives as well that enable you to get a sense of what your degree is going to be like. And what we say and what we abide by and what we promise you is that successfully getting through the TPP is what is going to get you ready to apply for entry to your degree at USQ. It is a really solid foundation. Now again, there's a great deal on that slide I know, and I'm not going to talk through each of those. That's just to give you a sense of the full scale of the TPP. Everything starts largely with study management. As I say, what are the, the smarts or the skills you need to be a student, the, the communication style of being a student, the maths and the electives. Now typically, TPP can take one semester, two semester or three semesters. So there's not really a typical, and there's no such thing as a typical TPP student either, so please don't think that you are the right fit or the wrong fit. TPP is board based, it's for everyone, there's no right or wrong to being a TPP student. But what you'll see there is that there's a, a wide range for you to study and you can, as I say, start in semesters one two or three. So please note that diversity and please don't ever think that TPP may not be the right fit for you. In terms of is it one semester, two semester or three semester, we're flexible. We know that almost everyone doing it works. So many of you who are studying with us have families. We don't expect you to be able to do four subjects every semester. You might want to pace yourself. You might need to pace yourself. And so you can work your way through a flexible pattern of enrolment. Perhaps sometimes you want to be on campus, other times online. That's equally fine as well. What we are aiming for is for a flexible, accommodating structure that is going to work around the fact that you already have a very busy life. Now, the other program I'd like to talk about is the Accelerated Entry Pathway Program. If you are finishing up in grade 12, this one is for you. So this one has a, a, a tighter, narrower, much more specific purpose. It will be starting, I mentioned semester two there, 2019, because now is the time to be thinking, do you want to do this? And then it will run in semester three, 2019, through from December to January. So what is the AEPP? Again, if you are currently in grade 12, if you are completing grade 12 this year, uh, if you're able to get the, to the Toowoomba or Springfield campuses, or if you're further afield than that, you can certainly apply because we have residential support as well. The AEPP is a fast, as it says, accelerated, compacted introduction to university study that if you possibly did not get the OP you're looking for, or there was some other reason that you're maybe not going to, you think, get into the degree you want for semester one 2020, then AEPP is for you. It is a faster, much punchier, uh, really quite demanding, but really exhilarating as well, entry, and it is a pathway into university for grade 12 leavers who are perhaps needing that alternative way into the university. What does it involve? It's just two subjects primarily based around academic skills 
and studying to actually be a student, it is intensive. It is fast paced. It takes a lot. I say on my last point there, it's not for the faint hearted, but we also know that the students who do it love it. They do enjoy it. It is an exhilarating ride and it is an absolutely brilliant introduction to university study. And so if you are in grade 12 and you're thinking maybe the OP you're, you're wondering you might get may not carry you into your degree, think about the AEPP instead because it is a really snappy entry into university. Okay, thank you very much. Stay put. Just a question from the live stream. Um, what if somebody is not an Australian citizen? Are they able to undertake any pathways programs? Are with they a USQ? permanent resident? They're not a permanent resident holder, no. Um, they would none that I still think they should contact us if we can actually log that and invite them to contact us and we can still consider some of the options that may be available. There are just maybe perhaps fee implications, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your presentation on our Pathways programs, Professor Harms. For our final speaker this evening, I would like to welcome Mr Josh Schonfeld, who will discuss how to apply to USQ. Josh is the Recruitment Coordinator in our Recruitment and Admissions team. Thanks so much, Philippa. So I really wanted to talk to everyone about the nuts and bolts about how to get into USQ and what, um, what options there are for that. So there's two main ways to apply to study with us at USQ, and these are either via the um, Queensland Tertiary Admissions Centre that you might know as QTAC, or applying um, with us directly. So most applications will come to us via QTAC. So if you're either a, um, a Year 12 school leaver or haven't done any study before, you're likely to be coming to us via QTAC. However, if you've studied with USQ before, however long ago that might have been, or you've completed a Certificate 3 or higher with TAFE Queensland, or you're looking to come to study with us in one of the programs that Marcus was just letting you know about, um, you can actually put in an application through to us directly. Um, that's just via our website, and there's a yellow Apply button there, but of course if you find any issues uh, finding that, you can just get in touch with us and we'll let you know where to go. Um, when you're applying to study with USQ, all students need to meet um, the entry requirements. Now, even if you didn't complete year 12, there are different ways to meet those entry requirements. So whether you come via a pathway option, um, like that offered via our Open Access College, or whether you wanna use your TAFE study or other study that you've done with a, with a registered training organisation, such as a certificate three or higher, we can certainly look at how that can um, gain you entry to a program. For example, a Certificate 3 will give you a specific entrance rank that might be, be able to be used for entry to an to a undergraduate degree. Again, if you're not looking at undergraduate options, but you're rather looking at the postgraduate study options, you would be looking to put that application into study with us via our direct application portal. If you don't think you're going to meet the entry requirements, the best thing that you can ever do is get in touch with our student support team. So I look after a team of really dedicated and talented people who are on phone, email, live chat, and at the counters in Springfield and Toowoomba every day, answering queries about helping students get into their program. Like Marcus was saying that there's no standard TPP student, there's very rarely a standard applicant either. Lots of people come to us with different experience and have different goals and where they want to get to. So what I really recommend is if you're thinking about where the study's right for you, get in touch with us and we can make sure you're in the best program for your circumstances and make sure we're sending you the right way to apply as well. Um, if you're a QTAC applicant and you've maybe been thinking about whether USQ is the right university for you, maybe tonight's convinced you that it's definitely the way that you should be coming and you need to change your preference um, to have us as your number one preference with QTAC. It's actually a really simple process to go, go through and you have three free preference changes each intake round. All you need to do is log into your QTAC application, click on my application, then course preferences, 
and then change preferences. And there's little arrows there to uh, move your preferences up, down, um, or delete them and add a new course if you've changed your, um, changed your preference. Um, if you have any issues with that, QTAC certainly have a video on their website, but we're happy to step any applicants through that process and you can give us a call on 1800 269 500 during business hours. The other really um, exciting thing that's um, good to note is that from semester one 2020, we've moved a lot of our course prerequisites to something called assumed knowledge. So that means if you were to see a subject there that's listed as assumed knowledge, doesn't mean that you don't need that knowledge to come into that program, but you might have got it through a non-traditional mode of, um, of acquiring that. So say, for example, you've been working in, in a trade for a number of years and you use maths every day and have decided to go on to engineering, a program like our associate degree of engineering now has mathematics listed as assumed knowledge instead of a formal prerequisite that we'll look at. And that means that if you feel confident in, in your mathematics skills, you're likely to be able to use your trade certificate to come into that program. Again, I'd recommend that anyone thinking um, this is um, something that you'd like to look at, get in touch with us and discuss where you're currently sitting. It might mean that um, you can meet the entry criteria now, but maybe after we've had a chat, we, we would recommend a little bit of pathway study just to support that little step up from where you're currently sitting into undergraduate study, like in our tertiary preparation program. Um, that's also really good to note for a refresher. Um, you might be ready to, to move into study, but not quite ready for a bachelor's degree. And we can certainly recommend um, some study that you could use as a refresher prior to taking the plunge into full undergraduate study. Thanks so much. Thank you for your presentation, Josh. We now move on to the question and answer portion of our live stream. If you have any questions that you would like to ask the panel, please type them in and we will answer as many as we can this evening. If we can't answer your questions tonight, we will ensure our team reaches out to you over the coming days to answer your questions. So a few questions that have been asked uh, for, as part of the registration and a few live. So the first one we have is how do credits work for courses here at USQ from other study? More than happy to answer that question. Um, so we often recommend students put in an apl application for credit once they've applied for a program. Now our faculty are happy to look at study, um, previous study, when that be at um, a TAFE level or um, in another university qualification. But what you need to do is put in an application to study and then get in touch with us to pop in your application for credit. Now, if you're applying to us direct, that's really simple in terms of just clicking a little button that says, yes, you'd like to apply for credit from your previous qualification, and then it'll direct you onto an application for credit. Um, if you're a QTAC applicant, um, you submit an application for credit a slightly different way. Um, two options, if you're ready to go with that, certainly just hop onto our website and type in apply for credit and it'll take you through the steps. Otherwise, we can certainly help you through, um, through that process um, by contacting the recruitment and admissions team via email, study at usq.edu. Um, give us a call on 1800 269 500 or from nine to five each day, hop on live chat and we can actually um, step you straight through that process. Thank you. We've got another question here. Um, how do I contact a supervisor about applying for a PhD? And is there any scholarships available for PhD study? I can take the scholarship question, certainly. Um, we do offer PhD scholarships. It's not my office that, that runs the process, so I'm a little bit vague on the, the you know, specifics, but we do advertise on the same website. So um, if you visit the USQ Scholarships website, you will be able to see research scholarships there. Um, you'll also be able to see if they're coming soon or if they're closed. Um, in respect to finding a supervisor? Um, I can talk about finding a supervisor. Um, if you hop on to the USQ website, you'll be able to see, if you navigate your way through the, the various schools, you'll be able to see the staff that are within the schools. Um, all of our staff profiles have research areas of interest on them, and some of them actually also have um, where staff are actually 
actively looking for students to work on projects that they already have going. So if you find a supervisor, a potential supervisor, who's working in uh, an area of research that you find interesting, um, please feel free to send them an email and, and have a chat about um, what you're thinking, what, what sort of area you want to research in, and whether that aligns with the sorts of things that they're able to supervise. Thank you very much. We have another uh, question that came through during people's registrations. Uh, are lectures, tutorials and pracs available online to external students? I'm happy to take that one too, I think. Um, absolutely, yes, they are. Um, we, it's very important to us that we have equity between our online and our on-campus students. So it doesn't matter what mode you study in at USQ, um, you will get the same, ex not the same experience, a similar experience, an equivalent experience. So yes, many of our courses run online tutorials and usually it depends on the size of the course, how many students are in them, but often they're run at times where people who are parents or who are working can actually join in as well. So they're not all just run during the day as well. Perfect. Uh, we also we have another one. Um, can I study online through USQ? Do some selected units at another university locally as part of my course? I'm happy to talk about that. So that would be looking at doing some study as a cross-institutional student. Um, there's a couple of steps you need to go through that. If you're studying with us in your main degree, you just have to get um, both approval from your faculty um, that you're able to study those those subjects and have them credited to your um, to your USQ program. And then there'll also be a cross-institutional um, application form that the university you're looking to study those extra courses with um, would have. So if you've got a uni university in mind that you want to do the, the extra subjects with, um, you can certainly get in touch with them, ask them for their equivalent form, because um, there's often a form that, that needs a formal signature on it from us for them to accept you. Um, and then once you've got that, get in touch with us via our, our email address and then we'll help you guide, um, help guide you through the process. I think we've got our final question is, when can I start my study next with USQ? I'd, I'd be happy to take that one as well. Um, so the next opportunity for a huge range of programs is semester three, um, which begins on November the 18th. Now we're taking applications for semester three right now, and we will take them right up to um, the start of semester. But what I'd recommend is, is if anyone's thinking about getting into study, get in that application sooner rather than later, just so we've got a chance to come back to you if we have any questions about your application um, and we can make any recommendations there. We're also taking applications for semester one at the moment. So if your program isn't a semester three available program, you can apply for um, semester one right now. And those applications, depending on what program you're looking at, will go over the next couple of months. Um, if you're looking at some of the so a lot of the health programs in particular, so um, nursing, midwifery, paramedicine, psychology, they have some different application dates. So it's good to either have a look at the website now or get in touch with us um, about your specific program and we can let you know when there's, um, there's specific application dates for those uh, semester one programs. Thank you very much, Josh. Well, that is all the time we have available this evening. Thank you everyone for joining us online for this special live stream event. If you have any questions you'd like to ask our team that you didn't have a chance to ask this evening, please contact our team via email at study at usq.edu.au or at 1800 269 500. We look forward to seeing you as a student at USQ in the coming years.